Hey, what's going on everybody? It is your boy Art with Toys and I'm back after a seven month hiatus from doing YouTube videos. And I figure what better way to get back into doing uh, videos than to review something that I truly love. Uh, so if you don't know, I'm a big Ninja Turtle fan and I just acquired these Mezco uh, TMNT figures last night. Uh, shout out to Mike's Toys and stuff over in Orange. Uh, he had them. I ordered them and uh, picked them up pretty easy. And uh, that shop has a little bit of everything. They always have the new stuff pretty quickly. So check them out if you're not. I will uh, link them in the description. Um, but yeah, uh, really excited about these. Uh, what you're looking at is a slip cover. You got the four turtles on the front. Those are the actual figures. They're busting through the comic book strip. You got Eastman and Laird's Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles on the right. One co uh, 12 Collective on the left. The sides are going to be the same. So they have kind of the classic turtle logo and Nickelodeon. Uh, the top, same thing, just in the gray with the turtle logo, the old turtle logo from Mirage Comics. The bottom's got your legalese, like so. And then the back actually has a uh, array of uh, all the accessories here that uh, come with this set so you obviously get the four turtle figures you get the soft goods a couple of cool accessories like a walkman and a anti-gravity gauntlet uh with a communicator i think it's anti-gravity gauntlet for donatello you got goggles each turtle comes with uh three different heads uh you get the wraps there uh so those are like the tie-off pieces from the wraps you get the long and the short version you get some pizza slices you get tons of hands you get your uh classic uh mezco stands there uh, with the color uh, representing each of the turtles' colors. You get the signature weapons, uh, some other things like communicators and uh, the grapples for climbing for the climbing ropes that come with the, uh, the, the set here. You get some effect pieces. Um, yeah, it, it's crazy. And then some other weapons. And what's cool, if you notice here, here's some of the classic weapons from the old Playmates figures. And what's funny is this doesn't even represent everything that's in the box because there's other weapons too that you'll find familiar when I pull everything out here in a second that uh, that are uh, reminiscent of the classic Playmate stuff. So it's pretty cool. So again, this does not show everything that's in the box. You'll see. All right, so flipping it back around, this is a slip cover. So we're gonna slide that off. And you got your classic Mirage Turtles there. But again, busting through the comics, and then, you know, again, 112, Mezco Toys, Nickelodeon, obviously the sides, uh, not really much going on there. The top and the bottom are the same, because, again, it's a slipcover, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start the presentation piece, just to kind of give you guys an idea of what you're getting into when you open this box. Um, when you cut it open, it's going to look similar to this. Again, I've opened these, I tried to put everything back the way it was. Uh, but most of your accessories and stands are going to be here. And then these black trays here are going to have the turtles in them. And that's also going to have all the hands and the heads and some of the other accessories. So they're facing each other from a packing perspective so they don't fall out. But I'm going to remove these trays and I'll be right back. All right, here's just a quick snip of uh, kind of the presentation in box. So uh, nothing too crazy here. Again, you see the turtles in the, the two trays there. And then along the bottom here, I'll lift this up you have all the other accessories. So just a real quick look at that. So I'm gonna start getting these guys out of the trays and uh, probably swap over to my regular review station. And uh, we'll start going through the turtles, the accessories, the articulation, all that good stuff. And uh, yeah, stay tuned. All right, and here we go. We got the guys out of the package and uh, I think they did a really nice job. And so just taking a look, you know, a lot of people are probably gonna ask about the size. I think the size of these are perfect, and I'll do some size comparisons later. But what I want to point out is, so with Donnie, uh, he's got a little bit of height, and he should. He's the slender of the bunch. Mikey is the youngest. He's got the athletic build. Uh, you know, for those of you who are familiar with the, the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, Mikey is usually like a, the quicker of all of them. Um, and then Raph is somewhere in between. So height-wise, he's in between Donnie and he's in between Mike, which he should be. And he's beefy. He's like, you know, Raph likes to work out. He's angry. So he's like, a, he's, you know, he's typically the strong, you know, strongest one. While Mikey's the quickest, he's the strongest. 
Um, so I think he, they're, they're perfectly sized there. And then Leo, again, he's got more of the strong athletic build. So he's somewhere in between kind of the build for Mikey and uh, Raph. Uh, height wise, he might be slightly taller than Raph. Uh, but, you know, again, he's, uh, he's smaller than Donnie. Um, and that's right where he should be. The other thing I want to point out, too, is the color of green. So if you guys have ever noticed with the different variations of the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, uh, typically they're drawn with different shades of green. And they did a really nice job of representing that here, too. So using uh, Donatello as an example, he's got kind of the brownish olive color. And I think it complements the purple bandana perfectly. Mikey with the lighter green, a little bit brighter, perfect for the orange. You know, uh, Leo, there's, it's a bluish green, complements the blue. And then kind of that dark pine green and, and red, kind of like Christmas colors. You know, you got Raph. So, you know, I, I actually honestly think that when... The first person who came up that illustrated them with um, the different colors really purposely meant to complement um, those colors with the bandanas that they're wearing and it's carried on. So they did a really good job of representing that here. Um, I am going to go figure by figure and just kind of take a look at the details. Obviously, there's some differences with these guys. There's going to be some similarities like the knee pads, elbow, pad, elbow pads, um, the wrist, things like that are going to be very, uh, similar in, in, in that nature. I did want to point out the wrist cause I did, the, I think they did something really cool with them that, you know, that you typically don't see on action figures. Um, but yeah, I want to go each, uh, one by one with each of them and just kind of look at the detail. Uh, so yeah, I'll be right back. All right. So taking a look at Leo. So again, um, a ton of detail with these guys. If you guys look at the head, and just the skin throughout, they did a nice job of just kind of replicating that kind of scaly turtle skin. Um, the other thing that's really nice about this too is there's a nice wash in these. So you can kind of see that. So they did a really nice job with that. Um, the bandanas, they have a, a nice detail here. So I don't know if you can see that, but there's actually a texture in there. So it actually looks like fibers or, um, you know, it's uh, it's material or fabric or things like that. So they did a really good job with that. Uh, moving down, you know what I like that they did with the belt? And I know this is something that was in the promo arts. And, you know, when they showed them at Comic-Con, they had this. But they actually used kind of a faux leather for the belts. So they could have went plastic. But with uh, Mesco, obviously, their thing is soft goods. So they did a really nice job of just kind of incorporating kind of soft goods into figures that really don't require a lot of soft goods. So if you take a look, again, you got kind of that faux leather, but look what they did. You know, they did the stitching here. So you have stitching around the pouches. You got stitching here. Taking a look at this pouch, you have, again, just the, like, like tiny stitching, but you have a rivet. And then what I really like is on the shoulder pad, check that out. So you have the stitching there and it's held on with a rivet and metal rings. So you got the metal ring on the front, metal ring on the back, comes down into the double strap here. Um, this is gonna hold the sheaths, which I'll show later, but again, more stitching. And uh, you got a little bit more detail here. So I, I just think that's so cool. And these are removable, they could come off. There's actually elastic. So the same elastic that they use to hold the elbow pads and knee pads on, it's built into the belt. And that allows the belt to kind of fit snugly, but you can, you can slide it up and down and again, you can remove it. So it's pretty cool. So yeah, that looks good. Um, looking at the front of the turtle shell, they're, again, they're all gonna be different, but you can see kind of the scrapes and cuts there. And again, there's wash all over this. So it's bringing out all this definition. So I think that looks cool. And if you even look at his skin, he's got like, you know, kind of like, you know, if I can get to focus, he's got kind of cuts or scrapes there or scratches. So I think that all looks really good. And then the elbow pads and knee pads, again, they're attached with this elastic. There's two elastic bands and they run through loops. And th these uh, elbow and knee pads they actually have like, they're actually kind of like a pliable soft material. So they feel like actual knee pads and stuff. The one thing that I would say you got to look out for, so when I was posing around Mikey uh, on the inside here, and I'll show it later, this one broke. 
and so the elastic is not running through there. I'm gonna remove his foot, slide that off, and fix it, so it's not gonna be a big deal, but um, you just have to be careful. One, one warning I would give everybody, be careful when you're posing this around because that will, uh, that will snap off. And then on the back, you look at the turtle shell. Again, just tons of detail there. Uh, you got scratches. They, they've been battling. They've been fighting. And it's so cool. And what I like about this version of these turtles is I don't think they represent any true uh, version that, you know, you can't look at them and say, oh, those are those turtles or those are that turtles. I think these are built to have uh, a little bit of, uh, you know, the old school cartoon turtles, the, you know, and obviously that those were branched or, you know, um, uh, associated with the cartoon, I guess. Um, the, the nineties turtles, the 2012 turtles, um, the Mirage IDW. I think there's just like, they purposely made these so that they kind of pay tribute to all the different versions of the turtles, um, that are out there. And I think they just did, they just nailed it. I think there's just such a, such a perfect job of, trying to basically capture or pay homage to all those different versions of these characters. So um, really, I just love that. So, you know, again, getting back into the detail, sorry for the rant. Um, look, look at the back of the head there. So there's, again, just the scales and the thing, they just killed it. Uh, moving down here, you got the wrists. So you got straps around the wrist, but check this out. This is what I was talking about earlier. They actually, this is the ball that the wrist is on and they actually made it to where it has the sculpt that the skin does. Usually this is just like a ball. It's just a flat ball that's in there. They did the same thing with the, the hip here too. So if you take a look at that, there's actually um, sculpting and there's like a wash in that. So yeah, it's it just like, again, these are extra details that they just went all out with. And uh, again, this is that swivel hinge swivel ball. So that will rotate so you can do uh, the regular uh, wrist movement, and then you get the roll of the dice kind of movement there too. And even the knee pads, they're they're damaged. Uh, the fingernails are painted, so check that out. And then even if you go into the fist, you can see another fingernail, and it's painted. So again, just just a ton of detail that, uh, you know, just stuff that where you're like, they, did they have to do that? Probably not, but they did. And... Uh, it honestly just goes a long way with these figures. And then the feet, you got the toenails painted on the feet too. So that's really cool. But yeah, just, uh, you know, and I just, I can't get over to how, and I'll show it in the articulation, how well these figures move considering, you know, they're, you know, they're geared up or everything, but they did a really good job. And typically what you see with Ninja Turtles is, um, you get kind of the basic movement, the arms and legs and things with most uh, versions, but you don't get a whole lot in the articulation piece. And that's where they did such a nice job of making some of this stuff pliable and it, it moves around and things like that. Um, so it kind of gets out of the way so that that, you know, the body can just move freely. So I'll show that later. But uh, one th other thing I wanted to point out, these can open. So this piece will slide up and there's like a foam piece inside there. I honestly wouldn't recommend uh, opening this because it is kind of a pain to get back closed once you have it open, but um, it does open. So that's pretty cool. All right, so we'll get Leo over there. Thank you, sir. And let's get Donnie out. And Donnie's uh, paint apps, honestly, like I think are some of the best ones for all four turtles. And I all, all of them have really good paint apps, but Donnie's are just like, it's just, they did such a great job of like blending this brown and this olive together. Look at that. And then like as the light changes and he moves around, you just kind of see more shades and details with that paint. Um, so yeah, it's super cool. So very similar to Leo. Again, I won't try to spend too much time on these. Again, teeth are done well. Bandana's done well. Texture. Belt's got the seams in it. Their pouches, you know, all of them have pouches, but they're displayed in different places. Uh, they did a nice job. Obviously, Donnie has the um, his iconic one-strap 
you know, going across the shoulder where Leo has, you know, the dual one. But yeah, damage here in the front. Again, the back shell looks really nice. Or more awesome stitching. This is where his bow staff will go, obviously. So yeah, this looks really cool. Again, elastic bands and stuff holding the knee pads, elbow pads on. And uh, the toenails and things like that are painted. They all come with fists out of the package. So, you know, I do have them kind of as they came out of the package right now. But I'll uh, I'll show you all the different hands and stuff. But, yeah. And then Wrath. The big, big beefy boy here. The shell looks really good. Even like the shells, I feel like there's something about this that captures kind of the Playmates look. He's got the pouch here too, which is kind of neat. He's got this, and I'll show you what goes in there later. Another pouch. He's got the loops for the size, so they'll go into here. And then two more pouches there. Again, more rivets. I mean, they just, all the details there, they just crushed it. Just looks angry. Again, the skin, perfect green color, perfect wash in there to bring out the definition. Everything just looks good on these. And then Mikey. So yeah. Mikey's got the loops in the back for the nunchucks. Yeah, these look, these look amazing. All right, cool. So um, I'll get into the accessories now. That is going to be quite <laughs> the chore, uh, but I'm going to do my very best to show you guys everything that these turtles come with. And um, yeah, so I'll be right back. All right, so before I get into the unique accessories that each one comes with, I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, the same accessories that you get with each one. So uh, the first thing is going to be your Typical Mezco stand, each in the color of the corresponding turtle. Uh, with that, you're going to get four of these arms. And obviously, you have the peg here. So if you want to stand the turtle on the stand like that, you can. Or you could pop that peg out and put this on there. And you have a flight stand for your turtles. These are one of the strongest flight stands you can get um, that come with the Mezco. So those are always really good. You're going to get four of the baggies for all the accessories, although I think there's so many accessories with each turtle. I don't even know if the whole this baggie will hold all of it. The next thing I want to show is you get this string with the hook at the end. And this is for your grapple. So here's your grapple, and each one of them come with this same grapple. And it does have an effect, so if you push up on here, the hooks come out. And you have that, and then if you pull it back down, they will go back in. And then if you take the string, you can do this one of two ways. You could probably tie this around this part if you want. Or what I like to do is I like to actually take the hook and pop the hook through there. And we have that. Uh, and then to go with this, each one of them will come with this little tiny piece here. And this actually snaps onto the belt like so. And then this little hook piece can go around the, the grapple. And then you can have the grapple hanging off of the belt. And you could do this without the string or you could do it with the string. And as you can see, there's one turtle missing back there. And that's because I got Mikey handy right here. And he has the grapple on. So I just uh, used my finger, wrapped the string around it, rolled it off. And then I put the grapple on first and the string over top of it, clipped it on his belt. So he kind of has it just kind of hanging off there if he needs it. So I think that's pretty cool. And again, you get that set up for each one of these guys. And then each one is gonna come with a long uh, bandana tie. And so you can pop the short ones out and you can pop this one in. And these, um, you know, obviously you could turn them if you wanna have them blowing in the wind or something of that nature. You get the turtle com. This also has an effect. So you want to pull the turtle com like this. Don't try to do it from the sides because uh, there's going to be antennas that pop out and you could snap those. So you're going to pull it 
like that. The antennas will pop out. And this looks good. It has the turtle shell detail, little uh, gold bits there. Again, the antennas, a screen, nothing on the screen. Um, and then there is some detail sculpted in there, like a square and a button. And then on the back, you get the lines and you get the holes for where the screws would be. And then again, just to put that back. And then you will get uh, two slices of the same pizza. So Donnie and Mike are going to come with this slice of pizza. And this one's cool because you can have like the wide open hand or the gripping hand. Um, the gripping hand holding the crust, obviously. The wide open hand would have it kind of sitting in there. And then you can have this part kind of go into the mouth, like to the teeth. So again, Donnie and Mike come with that. And then Leo and Raf are going to come with just kind of the standard pizza. It's flat, a little smaller. Both are uh, the same sculpt. There's probably subtle differences in the paint, but otherwise it's the same. So yeah, those are the accessories that each one come with that they all share. And again, you have, you know, just the corresponding colors with the base and the uh, tie piece that comes off the bandanas. So, all right, let's get into the individual accessories each one has. All right, so going over Leo's unique accessories, uh, obviously he's going to come with his weapon of choice, which is his katana. And this all looks good. And you got the wraps there on the end. And you got some gold bits for the handguard and then the bottom of the katana. Those will go into the sheaths like so. And they actually only go in one way. So if you try to put them in the wrong way, it'll stop. So you got to make sure they are in the right way. And if you push them all the way down, they're in there pretty snug. They won't just fall out. And then the sheaths come separate out of the package so you do have to slide the sheaths down in this faux leather uh, piece there on the, the harness or the belt uh, but that all works out really well and then uh, the other thing with the sword is you get these effect pieces and these are nice because you have the end of the sword there or the end of the katana and you could just place this in there and now you have a swipe effect and you get two of those so one for each katana, and those look good. You're gonna get the stoic head, and again, all the same detail. You're gonna get the angry head with the teeth out, and I actually took the longer tie wrap and placed it in there so it looks like it's kind of blowing in the wind. So that looks good. You're gonna get these guys here. I'm not exactly sure what they're called, but these obviously can be used in, in combat. Uh, but also, if you remember in the um, cartoon or the comic books, um, they would wear these and use them to uh, scale the side of buildings. And you could just take your grip hand. Let's see. Let's use this one. And you just open this and pop it in like so. And he's got a nice grip on that. You're gonna get three of these throwing knives. And these come with him. And they also come with uh, Donatello. And these are best used with the kind of close gri uh, closer gripped uh, hands. So like the close gripped hands like that. And you get one for each side. So I do think that looks pretty good. And then with that, if you really wanted to too, you could place these like this in between his uh, his fingers and you can have them like that. And then what's cool with that is you have this throwing effect with the throwing, the, uh, throwing knives on the end and you take this guy here and this kind of almost looks like a pointing finger hand. So like if he was like pointing the turtles in the right direction, you could use this. But this actually will clip on here and now you have him throwing the knives so that, you know, if he was swiping across this way and letting them go, his hand would finish here and the knives would be splaying out that way. So, so you have that. And then, like I mentioned, with the hands, you have different uh, variations of the grip hands. So you have the tighter grips here. You can get the sword in this one. This one's a little tight. 
And this one's kind of also like a thumbs up gesture. So that's nice. And then you do get this one. So the sword will fit in there. It's a little more loose. You get this really tight one. And this one probably could be used to hold the grapple um, string, but you can also have the knife like that. And again, if you wanted to wedge one, actually there's no room in between that finger. So yeah, that's pretty much all you can, I think it's the best use for the string or just one of these throwing knives. And then you get the open hand like this. And I think this one's best used if you wanted to have the pizza setting in there like that, you could do that. Let's see if I can get that focus, focus. Uh, you could do the turtle com in there. So if you wanted to just have him holding the turtle com, do that. Then you get another kind of splayed open hand for the other side. This one's not as wide open. Again, this one would be good for gripping certain things. So yeah, so uh, sword holding hands, for, uh, grip hands, tighter grip hands for the uh, uh, items with the smaller handles and things like that. And then you get uh, these other accessories here. So it wouldn't be Mezco without some soft goods. So you get this scarf. And obviously you can put this on him like a traditional scarf if you wanted. Um, I found it best to do it this way. So I'm just gonna remove the sheaths real quick. And I'm gonna take this off. And if you actually put this on with the wire at the bottom around his face and then kind of twist it off here in the back, like so, it, the elastic of it around the top actually goes around his face perfect. <laughs> that looks so cool. And then you get uh, a cloak for him as well. So we'll take that off. And the best way I've seen to put this cloak on, pop the head off, pop this cloak on the neck, put the hood down. Actually, let's use this head with the flowing piece. So you have that. So if you wanted to have him on a rooftop with that, you have that option. Or take this off. You want to have this up you have that as well so that looks really good and then what i did last night when i first got this was i actually had the hood down and i actually put the wrap around his uh face so you could have uh, both of them on at the same time so i thought that looked pretty cool but yeah that's leo all right let's get into donnie's specific accessories so uh, Donnie doesn't come with as many hands. So like I mentioned, uh, Leo and Mike, uh, both come with 10 different hands. They all come with fists out of the package. So I should have mentioned that during the Leo segment, but they all come with fists out of the package. Now, um, the reason why Donnie doesn't come with as many, uh, hands, he actually comes with eight total is because Raph actually comes with 12 for some reason. So, uh, where you lose the hands and Donnie, you get a couple extra hands for Raph. But Donnie comes with some of the cooler accessories. I want to point these out first. So you probably will recognize these if you've been a turtle collector for a long time. But the old Playmates turtles used to come with these. So like I mentioned at the beginning of the review, uh, these turtles kind of pay homage to all the different variations of the turtles that came out, in my opinion. I don't know if any everybody else sees that. They obviously probably weigh more so in the way of Mirage, but um, these little uh, callbacks are super nice. So if you guys remember, these would come with the original Playmates Turtles. They were cast in all brown. So those are cool. He also comes with these goggles that kind of have a translucent kind of green. Uh, I don't know if it's picking it up well, but it's uh, it's really cool. You, if you look at it in person, you can actually like look in there. There's like depth, almost like a 3D depth. And these are neat because they also have a hinge. And I'll take one of these heads here. It works best without 
the tie piece on the back if you want to get it down over his eyes. So if you want to get them snug on the head there, that works uh, pretty well. Uh, and then you can also probably just have it sitting on top if you want. So you have that. Here's one of the heads. This one's kind of got the smirk going. So his mouth is a little higher up on this side than it is here. And then you have this one, more again of a stoic face. And again, I put the longer tie on there just to show you guys how that looks. You get what I think is the anti-gravity gauntlet, and this was used in a few different variations of the turtles. So this is cool. You got the, the beams here. This is on a hinge, elastic, and then this actually flips up, and you got a communicator or a computer there. So that's pretty cool. And details are good. You know, there's uh, good sculpting. Uh, these little screws here have little spots in them for a flathead screwdriver. And those all look good. And what I would suggest is you get one of his grip hands. And he usually wears this on the right-hand side. But, I mean, it's not like you couldn't put it on the left-hand side if you wanted to. I, I typically associate him with wearing it on his right uh, hand. But you would just put the hand on first. And then what I would do is uh, slide the wrist through here and pop it in. And you can have him wearing the gauntlet. So again, anti-gravity gauntlet. So this is a really cool piece. Even like the gold has cracks in it and damage and weathering and stuff like that. So that's really cool. Uh, these are his accessory pieces that go with his uh, bow staff. So we'll get the bow staff here and I probably should have talked about that as a signature weapon first. Uh, but this just slides into the back. The first time you try to slide in, it's a little bit snug, but um, after that, you know, the second time you do it or so, it's it's going to work out just fine. But again, that looks good. You got the wood grain there. Not a whole lot of wash in the wood grain. And then you have the wraps. But what these pieces are good for is you actually take this, plug it on the end. If I could find it, there it is. And boom. So if you want to have him ramming the end of the uh, bow staff into someone's face, you can have him doing that. Or if you wanted to have him swinging it and he just made contact with somebody and he's kind of finishing the swing, you have that. So that all looks good. And then again, I mentioned uh, these coming with him and Leo. So he gets three of the throwing uh, knives there. And if you wanted to, you could just place those in the belt. You know what? I didn't mention it earlier. Let's see that fits in there good. The one thing I noticed too with this bow staff, if the easiest way to do it, go in like this. And then as you get to where the wraps are, just spin it. And it kind of goes up there a lot easier that way. Yeah, that looks good. Um, you know what? I didn't mention it. Does he have a spot? Yeah. So uh, Leo has a spot too for uh, those throwing knives. And then you have your hand, so you have a grip hand here. And you got more of a closed grip hand there. This would be useful for obviously helping hold his bow staff, uh, hold the string for the, um, the grapple gun, and then obviously hold the uh, classic Playmates weapons. So this would be cool. You get these hands. Again, these could be good for the communicator. It could be good for holding pizza. Or if you wanna have Donnie tapping away at a computer, you can do that. And then you have another grip hand there. And then you have his cloak. And his cloak is interesting. And I'm <laughs> I'm not sure if it was meant to be this way um, or not. It works either way. But the way his cloak goes on, so you're going to actually just place it on very similar to Leo's, like so. And uh, I mentioned Leo's has a wire around the... Uh, the edge Donnie's is down the back of the middle here so you have that place this on and if you notice with the sort with the uh, the hood facing forward let's get the hood up with the hood facing forward 
the cloak actually sits off to the side. So it's kind of interesting. I, I'm not, you know, it might, that might be the way it's supposed to be. There's a wire in this too. So if you want to pose it around, you can. Um, so I don't know if that, it, it might be. I mean, there are cloaks like that. So, you know, I thought maybe it was a defect at first. Like this was sewn on sideways, but I think this is actually how it's supposed to be. Just kind of gives it that dramatic look. And what's cool about these accessories, like the cloaks and stuff, because um, Mikey comes with like a tattered cloak is they kind of give you those last Ronin vibes, which I kind of think is pretty cool. So yeah, that looks good. Um, the only one that doesn't come with a cloak, you know, again, I, I pointed out Leo's, I pointed out Donnie's, pointed out the one that Mikey comes with. Mikey also comes with a, a sweatshirt, which I'll show. Um, the only one that really doesn't come with something similar is Raph because Raph comes with uh, his trench coat and hat. So we'll get into that next. All right, so real quick before I get into all Raph stuff, I should have mentioned um, Donnie also comes with one of these. So it's the just the effect that same one that came with Leo for the uh, throwing knives or I'm not sure the exact name of those, but yeah, he comes with that. And then I'm going to talk a little bit about his soft goods first, stop the video, and then come back to kind of go through the rest. Um, just because it would just take too long to try to put this on. So you have this soft goods coat. I took his hands off, uh, put his arms to the back, slid it on, and then just pulled it around so it's snug. And then one thing you'll notice here uh, with the hat, actually, is there is a peg in the back of the hat. So you remove the wrap uh, tie piece there, and you actually just place the peg into that hole and boom he's wearing his hat and you can kind of move it around on his head as well so i think that looks really cool and then you do have a spot here in the front for his size and that looks good and there's one on both sides and those fit in there so if you want to take his other side and just slide it in i would just be careful when you pose around his legs that you don't um pose the leg forward and into the side and bend it or break it or something of that nature. So I'm going to get this coat off because I want to talk about um, the spots on the back of the belt for some of the other uh, weapons that he comes with. All right. And real quick, I should have mentioned this, but I swear there's just so much to talk about with these figures. It's easy to forget things, but this coat does have a uh, wire on it so you could pose it around and there's actually wires here in the belt as well. So you can have those kind of posed around as well. And the wire goes up around the collar. So if you want the collar up, you can do that. So yeah, this is really cool. And uh, it's only in the front piece. So it's not uh, in the back or along the bottom. So, but still all in all, it's perfect. It look really nice uh, tailoring, tiny little buttons. Everything looks good. All right, so getting into Raph's accessories. Um, Obviously, it comes with his signature weapons, which are his size. You can see those on his uh, belt. But what is also cool is he also comes with a throwback. So if you remember, the Playmates figure also came with this. And this was all sculpted in brown. And this piece actually fits right into the back, just like the old figure. Uh, it's probably not as snug as the old figure, but it fits in there. If you guys remember the old figure, it was like that. And then he has these this little pouch here, and that is for his ninja stars. So you can just have those resting in there. I don't know if it's necessarily my favorite thing. It's not the most snug, but that works out. Let me see if I get that in focus. So you have that. You get three of these. So those are cool. And those uh, throwing stars, he actually has kind of a pinchy kind of hand here, just like some of the other turtles do. So you can just have those in the hand that like, that like so. And then he comes with uh, these like billy club. I think they call them tongas or something like that. Uh, but he has those. He has two of those. So that's pretty cool. He's got uh, another angry head. Actually, all his heads are angry because Raph is always usually angry. And again, I got the Raph in there. 
I'm getting that pops out if you want it. And then he's got this wide open mouth, which looks a lot like Leo's. Now, here's one thing I will show you. With these turtles, because they do have that mirage feel, and Leo and Raf are somewhat similar in color. If you wanted to do like them as their mirage counterparts, because as you guys know, they all wore red, uh, you could do that. But I think that looks pretty cool. It's a kind of a neat idea. Um, Raph only comes with three heads. So one, you don't have enough to do all four turtles. Uh, but two, uh, the color of these heads probably won't match up with Donnie and Mike as well as they do with Leo. Leo's not wanting to stand back there. That's as good as he's going to get for now. All right. Uh, Raph also comes with some effect pieces for his size. So if we take his size out here, you can actually plug this into here. I'm sorry. Actually, the handle goes in there. And then you take one of these open hands, and you can have it like that. And it looks like Raph is throwing the size. So that is pretty cool and you also can use this uh, hand to do the throwing stars so that's pretty cool and then last but not least you have two of these so if you wanted to have him kind of you know fighting and hitting his uh, size up against something you can have these on the end of each one and then, like I mentioned, he comes with 12 different hands. So again, you got the two fist out of the package. You have kind of this uh, somewhat open hand or partially open hand. You got some grip hands for the right hand side. So different grips there for holding different things. Um, you got another one of these hands that you, again, can use for throwing stuff. So actually there's two of those, one for each side. So if you want to have him, you know, um, throwing ninja stars with one hand and throwing a side with the other, you could do that. You got kind of the same similar open hands that the other turtles had. One more open than the other. And then you got more of the closed grip. So this one's probably more so for the side. Like so. And then this is, again, the small one. This one works out really well for the ninja stars if you want to have them holding them like that. Or, again, the rope from the grapple. So, that is all of Raph's stuff. All right, and finally, on to Mikey. So, Mikey is going to come with his signature weapon, which is the nunchucks. And these look good. And there's actually a real chain in there. And if you notice, there's, like, some, you know, odd-looking parts there. And that is wire, actually. So... Uh, he can pose you can pose these around and the wire will keep them in position and it's cool I just wonder how long that wire is gonna last before it finally snaps and he comes with two of these so again you got kind of that similar wood grain that was in uh, Donnie's bow staff and then uh, the metal chain everything looks good and these could be put on the back of his belt I like to place them like this so upside down, that way when he reaches his arm around to grab him, he's grabbing him from down here, pulling him from around to the top, and he has him already in position for combat. So Now these are the tightest fit to begin with. So after a first couple usage, it'll break it in and it'll be easier. Um, but they definitely, you gotta, you gotta be careful, but you can, you can make it work. Uh, it just takes a little bit of time the first time and but uh afterwards it'll be, work out really really well and then you get the nunchuck handle and you get two of these so you get two nunchuck handles and two of these guys and then this just pops in here and then you can have him holding this as if he's spinning the chucks so again there's two of those and if you want to have one in each hand you do have two handles like i said you get headphones so a good old Walkman, and that just fits on his head perfectly, and then you can have him holding this piece, uh, so that's cool. And um, I haven't tried testing it yet, but there is a pouch on the front of his belt, and those pouches do open, but there's like a foam in there, so I haven't tried to see if that foam can come out. 
And if maybe you could just slide the Walkman in there, that'd be cool if you could. Um, but yeah, this looks good. Got that classic yellow on it. And then I like how they used orange. So that looks uh, very kind of 80s. And then uh, here's one of the heads, obviously. So this is the laughing, like smiling head, I guess. Not laughing, but smiling head. And a little bit of the tongue showing there. So that looks cool. And then if you guys remember the 2012 cartoon, every time they would get a little bit like startled or whatever, their eyes would get two different shapes and real circular. And then they would be all white. So I think that pays homage to the 2012 here with this. And Mikey's like kind of startled or scared. Again, I got the wrap in there. Uh, again, you get uh, two more of these Playmate style weapons. And then you get these tiny little things here that he could throw. But these also fit into the belt. Let's see if I can do this. It's so tiny. There we go. You can have those in there and probably even push it down further if you wanted. All right, so it focuses. So yeah, and there's three spots for all three of these. So that is cool. You get this hoodie, which is not a very inconspicuous hoodie for a ninja. I uh, was gonna put it on him before, just to, you know, kind of like what I did with Raf, but it is a pain. This zipper actually works, um, but it doesn't unclasp at the bottom. So that's all one piece. You look at that. So what I did is I unzip it. Uh, when I put this on him uh, last night, when I first opened these, Slid, took all his hands off, slid him down through here in his arms, and then zippered it up. And then you do have a wire here in the hood. So it's cool. It, it kind of comes down really far on him, too. So I, I just don't know if I like, you know, really like the look. But this is a cool piece. And he's got the draw, you know, the strings for tightening the hoodie or the draw strings or whatever you call them. And then, like I mentioned, he does have this kind of tattered cloak. Very kind of last... Ronin-esque that you can put around him. So that all looks good. And you see there's holes and stuff in that. And then Mikey comes with uh, 10 hands again. So you got 10 hands with Mikey, 10 hands with Leo. You get um, 8 with Donnie, 12 with Raph. And again, these are just not going to spend a ton of time on them. These are very similar to like before. So if you wanted to get this pinching kind of hand with the, the little blade in there, you can do that. You got your grip hands. Another grip hand. Another grip hand. This one kind of has the thumbs up too. So if you wanted to have him smiling with his thumb up, you could do that. But it also is, acts as a grip hand too. So You got the throwing hand. So if you wanted to have him throwing something or, you know, if you wanted to have him holding on to this like that, you could do that. So that's cool. And then you got the, these hands. And again, these would be good for like setting the pizza, the turtle calm, the grapple in, in and just having him kind of open hand holding it. So, so it looks good. So that is Mike. All right. So getting into articulation, we are going to use Michelangelo. Uh, again, even though they still all kind of have slight variations from a size perspective, they're all basically going to move the same. So Mike, uh, well, again, all of them are going to have the head on the double ball peg. Uh, so you have that at the top of the neck that goes into the head. And then you have the other ball peg that comes from the bottom of the neck into the body. And that's going to allow you to look up that far. You can look down all the way. You got tons of pivot. Left and right. And yeah, everything moves good. Uh, the other part of the head that has articulation again is if you want to turn the tie wrap around, you have that option. Uh, moving down to the arms, you have the shoulder that goes all the way out like that. You do have the shoulder swivel like that. You have the double uh, jointed elbow that comes up all the way. So you can get that 
And again, you have the elastic on the uh, elbow pad, so those get out of the way. So that works out well. And then you do have the swivel hinge swivel on the wrist, so you can, um, I have Mikey right now in the roll of the dice position, but if you wanted to spin that around and just kind of have the traditional um, wrist, you can, uh, you can obviously do that. So that all works good. And then moving down to the uh, midsection here, the, um, the shell is actually pretty loose. In fact, if you take the belt off, like so, just have them without it, this shell actually spins all the way around. It's kind of weird. So, uh, and it's, it's pliable, so it gets out of the way. The front shell also is pliable and gets out of the way. So you can get him to bend. I'm pushing it quite a bit check that out look at that bend well like there's not many turtles that bend that well that is absolutely awesome so really nice uh and then it doesn't go back far obviously because the shell is going to stop it but you could push it a little bit but man just uh, the crunch i mean this all works so perfectly right here like the way they engineered this and it's not even anything that's like super over the top like it just pliable material that just allows you to really push the articulation on the ab so that looks good and then uh on the legs the legs will kick up about that far they'll go out all the way so he can do actually a full split uh you do have the upper thigh swivel here and i like the way that that's done because uh you have the ball that comes out into the thigh that allows it to rotate on that ball, but then you also have uh, the thigh swivel cut there. That just allows you to turn it on that. And then you got double jointed knees that go up that far. So that all looks good. And then uh, moving down, you do have the foot. The foot can spin. And then it does have some ankle pivot, which... You know, for Mezco, they're not really known for having the best ankle pivot, but I think this works out perfectly for these turtles. And then the foot will go back. Let's straighten out his leg here. Foot will go back that far. And then it won't go up too far. It kind of gets stopped there. But all in all, I, I think that's everything you need for the turtles. Like, he can do the kicks. He can move his arms around for fighting poses and stuff like that. So if you wanted to have him... You know kind of ready to duke it out you can do that and uh, again it's crazy you know if you wanted to have him just ready to fight and you wanted to have him like again just really crouched over and then you know just, you can have him ride a skateboard or something too but check that out look at that there's, again, not many turtles. Revil Tech, they can do it, but there's a cut here that allows the ab to crunch. This is, there's no cut. It's just pliable material that allows him to just bend over. So, yeah, everything you need is here. Everything you need is here. Uh, I think the articulation on these is great. One thing I'm just going to point out again, I talked about this earlier. Be careful with the articulation. As you can see, if I can get this to focus. As you can see right here, that broke and the band came out. And I did that just kind of bending the knee. So I'm going to actually pop the foot off, slide that off, put the uh, elastic back in there, and then I'll repair that where it, where it broke. And then um, and obviously I'll just pop the foot back on. It should be good as new. But... Not a huge deal, but you just want to be careful. Something to be, something to be aware of. All right, that's articulation. And sorry, one more point of articulation that these guys had that I forgot to show. Uh, they do have waist swivels that are hidden uh, under the shell there, so you could kind of see that cut. And uh, yeah, so they can turn at the waist. So yeah, just wanted to make sure I showed that. All right, I'm gonna do some quick size comparisons and then get out of here because I know this video is taking a long time. So here are the Mezco Turtles next to a Marvel Legends Wolverine. 
from the 97 uh, X-Men show. Here they are next to Revil Tech Black Panther. Here they are next to Mafex Black Suit Spidey. Here they are next to SH Figu Arts Tobey Maguire Spider-Man. And I'm gonna show them next to three of uh, the Mezcos that just came out that I'm excited about. So here they are next to Mezco Spider-Man. Here they are next to Mezco Doctor Doom. And last but not least, here they are next to Mezco Snake Eyes. Why well, they're all looking off to the right. All right, and then getting them in next to some other turtles. Here is the Mirage uh, Neca Leo. Here is the Turtles in Disguise Toon Donatello with his trusty goggles. My personal favorite, the 1990s movie Turtles. This is Raph. And last but not least, because I do compare the articulation on these to these guys, here is the 2012 cartoon or CGI show from Nickelodeon. This is the Revil Tech Michelangelo. And let's throw him in there with Master Splinter. He obviously should be a little smaller. Maybe not that small, but he should be smaller. I think that looks good. And then, Mecca Casey Jones. I think that size as well, right? Because Casey is a human, and the turtles should be smaller than him. So yeah, that's it. I'm going to get these guys set up, uh, give you my final thoughts, and we'll wrap this video up. Thanks. All right, and just to wrap this video up, uh, I know the three questions were... Um, you know, coming out of when these things were announced was how would they pose around? How long would it take to get them? You know, uh, would they fit in with your other figures like scale wise? Were they the right size? Uh, and yeah, I think just overall the look, you know, I think people when the promo art came out were kind of skeptical and probably held off. But um, I, I really, truly believe Mezco delivered with these. Uh, the articulation is really good. Um, the accessories are really good. I think they look amazing. If I were to have some nitpicks, I think one would be, you know, obviously I'm kind of bummed that that knee pad on Michelangelo broke. I will be able to repair that, but it does definitely suck. I do think the wire in Michelangelo's nunchucks eventually will wear down and probably break. Um, and then my only other concern is with the belts being that faux leather, um, over time that the the layer that looks like the leather peeling and then also just where they uh store their weapons um because some of it you know obviously it's it's based on friction uh and those uh those holders are, are fairly tight i just worry that over time those are going to wear out uh potentially break off and things of that nature so i would say like even though these guys have great articulation i'll just be a little careful around like the pouches and and the belts and stuff that you're just not torquing at it too hard and uh you know potentially breaking it but all in all these things are great i think they're a great representation of all different types of turtles i think they kind of I, I don't know if the word is amalgamation or or what but they they just did a masterful job of pulling them all together and just making a great set of turtles i would tell you you know if i were to pick one figure to go to the to my my coffin with the 90s turtles would definitely be the ones that i would take but if somebody said, hey, Rick, that you need to pick one set of turtles that you're going to take pictures of for the rest of your life, I honestly think it would be these guys. And it's because of the accessories and things. There's just endless probabilities and options there. And I just think that, you know, over time, you would just never get tired. You'd always be finding something new to shoot. And uh, I just think they're a lot of fun. So, yeah, this is a great set. Uh, I think the other question, too, real quick, just to wrap up, was the price point. I think people were like $400. Is it going to be worth uh, the $400? I personally think it is. You're getting four Mezco figures, which typically run $80 to $100. But you're getting so many accessories with this set. Soft goods and weapons and, you know, just things of that nature that I honestly think that 
you know, they, they probably could have charged more, uh, like 425, 450 and might've gotten away with it. I think 400 is probably a nice sweet spot. And, and to be honest with you, there's probably some accessories they could have left out, like some of the stars and the, um, the knives and things like that and maybe even drop the price down a little bit. But I, I again, I think 400 is a sweet spot. And I think for what you're paying, you're getting a, a really quality set of turtles with a ton of options. So that is all I got. I hope you enjoyed this review. I appreciate it if you stuck around this long. I know it's been an hour, uh, but I did, you know, I'm very passionate about the turtles and I did want to give you a, a really detailed review. So I'll throw chapters into this video so that if you want to skip around, you can. And with that, everybody be good to yourself and each other and peace.